Good morning, Sunday morning. I greet you and I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. So happy that you're able to join us, whether you're watching on band with the Cross Life family worship or YouTube or Facebook. Thank you for taking your time out to join us today just for some encouragement, some uh, truth, which is lacking so much today in our society and in our world. So it's good to hear truth. Uh, so I wanna welcome you. I wanna pray with you for just a moment and then give you a word of encouragement. And I pray that you are encouraged in Jesus' name. Uh, every time Satan opens his mouth, he lies to us. He is the father of lies. <clears throat> but Jesus is the truth. And so that's what we want to speak today, and uh, that you'd be encouraged. Let's, let's pray together, shall we? Our Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we come before you with thanksgiving, <clears throat> with hearts of praise. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. We want to thank you, Lord, for every spiritual blessing that you have given to us. First of all, thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross to pay for our sins. And thank you, Lord, for that blood that purchased our salvation, that purchases our very next breath and our heartbeat. Nothing would be possible had it not been for the blood of Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you, Father, for the blood of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you that your mercies are new every morning. So today, you woke us up with new mercy and sufficient grace for this day. Father, we're desperate for you and we're lost without you. In Hebrews chapter uh, 6, I believe, the book of Hebrews tells us that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to find mercy and grace and help in our time of need. So as we come before you, Lord, worshiping you, adoring you, praising you, thanking you for today's new mercy and grace. We find ourselves in your presence, truly needing mercy for today and grace and help us, help for us in our time of need. Lord, we rejoice in you because we have a hope, a hope of eternal life. We rejoice in you, Lord, because we have the answers that the world is searching for. His name is Jesus. He's the answer. You've given us your Holy Spirit. You've given us your Holy Word, your Holy Bible. Again, we are so blessed with every spiritual blessing. And the list goes on and on. You have established angels around us, Lord, to keep us and to guard us. Lord, to help us with our sitting down and our rising up, our going out and our coming in. We're so blessed. We have, Lord, your wisdom. We have your knowledge. We have your discernment. Praise you, Heavenly Father, for every spiritual blessing. Thank you, Lord, that today we walk in your favor. We walk in the blessings that you have established for us to walk into. Father, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so, Father, we trust you completely. Our hope is in you. Our life is found in you. You are our joy. You are our strength. Even in our weakest time, that is when your strength is, is, uh, is more evident 
And only you can do that, Father. Other religions, other false gods, they, they depend on the people to be strong. But Lord, you said in our weakness, you are strong. So what a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God you are. Father, we know that with you all things are possible and without you nothing is possible. So again, we come in Jesus' name before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. Father, as we look at your word today, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that we have a copy of your word, your holy Bible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with this precious, precious gift of your holy Bible. And then your Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Thank you, Lord. Lord, this is the day that you have made, so we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. All these things, Father, we praise you and thank you. In the precious and holy name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Praise God. Well, uh, if you want to be turning in your Bible to John chapter 14, that's where we're going to be speaking from today, John chapter 14. I just want to give a little background like I do every uh, Sunday when we gather at Cross Life Family Worship. Uh, we are on week 13 of a series that was not planned <laughs> about church growth, uh, church growth series, and... Uh, our, our scripture for that is Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, where it instructs us as the church to continue in a few things that we can do and then let God do that which we cannot do. It says in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, that we are to continue in the apostles' doctrine, teaching the same thing that the uh, apostles taught believing the same things that the first generation Christians, the apostles, the things that they believed. They said that we're to continue in the apostles' doctrine, breaking of bread, fellowship, and prayer. And then God will do the adding to the church. Only God adds and subtracts from his church. People might think that they are in control, but only God is in control of our coming and our going, our sitting down and our rising up. And we always want to make sure that we're letting him uh, control those things in our life. Uh, even though we think we are in control, we are not. Uh, even Jonah, when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, he went the opposite direction. Uh, at the end of the story, he ended up where he was supposed to be in the first place. But after much grief, much sorrow, much heartache, much pain, much difficulty, much humiliation, uh, he was where he was supposed to be in the first place. So praise God that he is in control of your next breath and he is the one who is ordering your steps and my steps. So we continue in those things that the apostles believed and taught. We continue fellowshipping, which Cross Life does very, very well fellowshipping with one another, a breaking of bread, which is sharing meals together. That is where people tend to open up and be the most honest about who they are. And uh, that is why we're called Cross Life Family Worship, truly a family. And then uh, praying together. We do that daily as a church. We do that weekly on Wednesday nights when we gather. And then we do it just in our own lives on a regular basis. I trust that you are in prayer on a regular basis. So then, uh, after eight weeks of talking about prayer, we uh, are now on the fifth week of talking about salvation. The first week was salvation by grace through faith, how grace and faith are both gifts. The gift of faith gives us the ability to accept the gift of grace. The second week was a continuation, salvation by grace through faith, not of works, so that no one can boast or brag that they are better than anyone else. Salvation belongs to God and God alone. 
and uh, it has nothing to do with us. Salvation belongs to God. Uh, the, the third week, we talked about salvation by grace through faith, not of works, but also being sure of your salvation. And hallelujah, on that Sunday, we had people accept Jesus Christ as their Savior because they were not sure of their salvation. And then the fourth week was, uh, last week, the topic was, is there really a hell? And if there is a hell, a place called hell, how could a loving God send anyone there? And we broke that question down and uh, walked away with a very clear understanding. And again, last week, we had someone receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. So we're thankful that the sermons are bearing fruit and God is truly adding to his church just like we uh, believed he would according to his word. This week is part five of the salvation uh, topic and uh, it is that each person does not have their own way to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way. There is only one way. His name is Jesus. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So that is what we're going to talk today briefly about and uh, be encouraged uh, that uh, by the grace of God, we are on the right path to heaven because we believe his word and uh, not what somebody else might be telling us. Our source for truth is the Holy Bible, the word of God. Amen. And I pray you have a copy with you or in front of you right now so that you can verify everything that's being said and not just take my word for it. Too many uh, people preach their opinions nowadays, and uh, that's very dangerous. We want to only preach what the apostles preached, those first-generation Christians who actually walked with Jesus Christ while he walked the earth. So again, we studied about prayer for several weeks, and now we're talking about salvation. And uh, these sermons were never planned in advance. I, I didn't plan to do a, a eight week series on prayer. I didn't plan to do now five weeks on salvation, but uh, God is good. It's his church, it's his ministry, and where he leads, we will follow, amen? I know you agree in Jesus' name, amen. So we say the apostles' doctrine, that's kind of vague, what does that mean? As I said, the apostles that walked with Jesus, they were disciples first, and then they became apostles. And so uh, their doctrine was their beliefs, that which they had seen and heard and learned directly from Jesus himself. That's what they taught. That's what they believed. And that is what we follow even to this day. It sounds something like this. We believe in the inspiration of the Bible both the Old and the New Testament. We believe in the creation of man by the direct act of God, the incarnation and virgin birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his identification as the Son of God, his vicarious atonement for the sins of mankind by the shedding of his blood on the cross, the resurrection of his body from the tomb, and his power to save men from sin. The new birth, salvation through the regeneration by the Holy Spirit, and the gift of eternal life by the grace of God. These are just some of the apostles' doctrine that we believe and we follow and we walk in it. There is so much more, but that covers most of it. And uh, so th these are the things we teach. Amen. Amen. We always spoke about being saved by grace through faith and not of works so that nobody could boast. Uh, there will be nobody in heaven boasting uh, that they were good, that they were better than somebody else because we will be standing before the only one who is good and that is God, amen. In Psalm chapter three, verse eight, verse eight it says salvation belongeth to the Lord. So it's all about him. He leads us, he draws us, he sends somebody to give us a message. Then he gives us the gift of faith so that we can receive the gift of grace to obtain salvation 
That's why salvation belongs only to the Lord. It does not uh, have anything to do with us, except that he chose us. And for that, we're eternally, eternally grateful. Praise God for that. Amen. So today, we're talking about uh, the fact that in the times and the days that we're living, so many false teachings and false doctrines have saturated our churches and social media, misleading people to believe that we can all have our own way to heaven, our own path to heaven. If we'll just follow our own path, we'll all go to heaven. As a result, everyone today has their own way, their own truth, and their own life. In the Bible, uh, when Jesus was comforting his disciples, right before he was betrayed by Judas, and then he was tried in a mock trial, and then he was crucified. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 14. This is the passage I gave you earlier. Verses 1 through 6. The final verse, Jesus tells his disciples, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Here's John chapter 14, starting in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? In verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, unto Thomas, I am the way, and I am the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Amen. In John uh, 13, verse 33, Jesus said, Little children, yet a little while, and I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, amen. So paraphrasing, he said, you're going to look for me, just as I told the Jews. So I tell you now, where I am going at this moment, you cannot come meaning he was going to the cross and then he was going to raise from the dead and then he was going to ascend into heaven. This prompted Peter to ask uh, where he was going in verse 36 of, that, of John chapter 13. Peter says, where are you going? Peter and the others did not understand that Jesus was speaking of his death and his ascension into heaven. So Jesus' response says, where I'm going, you cannot follow, but you will follow later on. Amen. That's comforting words. The disciple Peter was still misunderstanding, uh, and he told Jesus, I'll follow you anywhere. I'll even lay down my life for you if necessary. And Jesus very patiently continued to teach his disciples. And he began to speak more plainly about heaven, describing the place he was going to prepare for them. And this is when he said in verses 2 and 3 of John chapter 14, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There's a saying nowadays that says normal is not coming back. But Jesus Christ is coming back. Praise God. He's gone to prepare a place for us and he'll come again and receive us unto himself. And then Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. This is in verse 4. Speaking for the others, Thomas said, uh, they did not know where he was going. So how could they know how to follow him there? <laughs> in answer to this question, Jesus said one of his seven famous statements, I am. 
There are seven famous statements where Jesus says, I am. And this is one of them. In verse 6, John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say there is a way. There is a truth. There is a life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to briefly talk about those three statements. I am, and then we're going to talk about the way, and then we're going to talk about the truth. Just for a few moments, and then we'll be finished uh, for now, but not for good, praise God. We're constantly seeking and searching the, the Word of God, uh, and we appreciate God for giving us His Word. Let's talk about I am. In the Greek language, when you say I am, it would be the same as saying, I myself and only I am. Wow. I myself and only I am. Several other times in the Gospels, we find Jesus using those same words, I am. In Matthew 22, verse 32, Jesus, uh, Jesus quotes Exodus from the Old Testament, Exodus 3, verse 6. So Matthew 22, 32 is quoting Exodus from the Old Testament, Exodus 3, 6, where God uses the same intense way to say, I am. He said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I am. In John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus talked about Abraham as if he knew Abraham personally. So the Jews are questioning Jesus' age. They say, you're not even 50 years old. How could you know Abraham? In John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Because Jesus said, truly, truly, I say, the Jews clearly understood Jesus to be calling himself God because they took up stones to stone him, uh, considering that blasphemy to make himself equal with God. Again, in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus is giving the great commission, sending out the disciples, and this is the point where they became apostles. They were disciples, they were followers, now they're being sent out, and that makes them apostles. Sent out by Jesus Christ, not sent out by somebody uh, like oh, a pastor or another human being. The apostles were became apostles because Jesus sent them out. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, here it is, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I will just pause right there and say to you that we do not have to take authority as many people do nowadays when they're praying they take authority you don't have to take any authority from jesus christ or from god almighty because he said i am with you i'm not absent i'm not incapable i'm not duct taped to a chair somewhere where i'm unable to get to this situation so that you're going to have to take authority and do these works he says, I'm with you. So we operate under his authority. We never have to take his authority because he said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Praise God. Amen. Still talking about I am in John chapter 18, verses four through six, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden, uh, before his crucifixion, he told them, they, they were looking for him, and he said, I am he. And his words were so powerful that the soldiers fell back onto the ground. Wow, wow. Imagine words so powerful spoken by the great I am and saying, I am, that the soldiers fell backwards onto the ground. These words reflect the very same name of God in Hebrew, which is Yahweh. Yahweh, where we get the word Jehovah. 
Jehovah, which means the self-existent one. It is the name of power and authority, and Jesus called himself, I am, Jehovah, Jehovah. So when we have the name Jehovah Rapha, the self-existent one, the Lord, my healer. Jehovah Nisi, the self-existent one, the Lord, my banner, the one who fights my battles for me. So the names of God are beautiful and they're powerful and we need to get to know them, which will help us in our prayer life immensely. I encourage you to continue understanding the names of God. He says, I am. I am. This is a powerful statement and when he speaks it, uh, uh, you'll never be the same. Even those soldiers, they fell back onto the ground when he spoke and declared, I am. The next statement is, the way. So now we have I am and the way. The way. Jesus used these words to describe himself as the only way. The only way. A way is a path or a route. Later on today, I'll take a way, a path or a route on my way to a Bible conference with uh, many, many pastors. And uh, I will take a way and I will take a route. But Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the only way. Mm -hmm. And the disciples were confused about where he was going and how could they follow him. They wanted to follow him. This is very understandable because up until this point, uh, the disciples had been with Jesus daily. They followed him. They walked with him. They spoke with him. They uh, were able to observe his miracles firsthand. And so now he's saying, I'm going somewhere. You cannot come with me right now. And they're confused about that. And that's understandable. Amen. As he had told them from the beginning, Jesus was again telling them, and he's telling us, follow me. There is no other path to heaven, no other way to the Father. Peter repeated this very same thing many years later when he was speaking to the rulers of Jerusalem. And this is what he said in Acts chapter 4. Verse 12, Peter said, Neither is there salvation in any other. Let me say that again. Neither is there salvation in any other. I hope you were paying attention, and I'll say it a third time. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter reminds uh, the rulers in Jerusalem, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There is no other way. That same verse, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, what it's saying is Jesus is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by where we can be saved. There's no other name you can call on and be saved, receive eternal life salvation this exclusive language is what makes people think suddenly after 2000 years that the holy bible must be wrong because all of the fake news the cnn abc cbs msnbc all say that we should embrace diversity equity and inclusion so god must be wrong now and the fake media must be right all of a sudden. Uh, this is where our entitlement mentality kicks in and says, there cannot be only one exclusive way to heaven. I should be able to get to heaven just because I'm awesome. <laughs> and uh, I helped an old lady cross the street one day. I should be able to get to heaven. Uh, it shouldn't be so exclusive. It should be inclusive. This inclusive behavior is destroying our country. This inclusive uh, mentality is destroying our government, our businesses, our banks, our colleges and universities, all the way down to our elementary schools. It is not working out like they thought and hoped that it would. It certainly is not going to work out well for those who think that their eternity can be played with by demanding that God start to be inclusive. Uh, inclusive also and uh, 
there uh, is a well-known, uh, I call him a speaker, he calls himself a pastor. There's a well-known speaker who has gone on uh, a couple of, of uh, the number one talk shows. And when asked, is Jesus really the only way to heaven? His answer was, for me, Jesus is the only way. But for others, they may have another way. That was a lie straight from the pit of hell. From, Jesus, from Satan himself, who is the father of lies. There is only one way for me and for you. His name is Jesus. Amen. I am the way. Let's talk about the truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. We've talked about I am. We've talked about the way. Let's talk about the truth. Amen. Don't you love truth? I've heard people say, I hate liars. I hate liars. And yet they embrace lies on a regular basis, depending on where they get their information from. And then they believe it. If you hate lies, then listen to what's being spoken today from the word of God. Jesus says, I am the truth. Amen. Again, Jesus used that part of grammar called a definite article to emphasize himself as he did by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the only way. Here Jesus is saying, I am the only truth. In Psalm 119, the book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Psalm 119, 142. King David is praying to God, and this is what King David says. In Psalm 119, verse 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Amen. One more time. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said that he came to fulfill the law. And in John 1, 1, Jesus, as the living word of God, is the source of all truth. Here's what it says in John 1, 1. In the beginning, amen, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The book of John is powerful because uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they introduce Jesus starting from his birth and then into his uh, earthly life and his ministry. But the book of John is very different. It introduces Jesus from the beginning, all the way from the beginning, and that's what makes it so different. John's theology is actually quite a bit deeper than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. That was Jesus. And the Word, Jesus, was with God. And the Word, Jesus, was God. Amen. And that is the truth. I am the way. I am. I am the way. And I am the truth. Let's talk about the life. Amen. We thank God for life. We thank God for breath. The book of Psalms says that the dead can no longer Praise the Lord. So those of us that are still living and breathing, hallelujah, we can still praise the Lord. There's power in life. Amen? And so the life, let's talk about that. Jesus had just been telling his disciples about his soon coming death. And now he's claiming to be the source of life. Only God can do that. <laughs> Again, this is Jesus and he's talking to his disciples about his soon coming death. And, uh, he, you know, he had just claimed to be the source of all life, but now he's talking about his soon coming death. So in John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, John 10, verse 17 and 18, Jesus had just declared that he was going to lay down his life for his sheep for his followers. And then he was going to take his life back up again. He spoke of his authority over life and death. 
that was given to him by the Father, the Heavenly Father. In John chapter 14, verse 19, Jesus gave the beautiful promise. He said, because I live, you shall live also. Amen. The deliverance that he was talking about to provide for them was a true deliverance. Not a political deliverance, not a social deliverance, a true deliverance from a life of bondage to sin to a life of freedom in heaven for eternity. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about bondage to sin. The flesh is weak and the flesh always wants more and it's never satisfied. So when you're feeding the flesh, you find yourself in bondage to the flesh. And Jesus offers deliverance from that bondage to life everlasting with him. Praise God. Amen, church. Praise God for that. So Jesus said in John 14, I am. I am the way. I am. I am the truth. I am. I am the life. Here's the conclusion. Jesus declared himself as the great I am, and he said, as I've just said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only path to heaven and the only true measure of righteousness and the only source of physical and spiritual life is him, Jesus Christ. With all of this truth written in God's word about Jesus being the only way, the only truth, and the only life, there are still, there are still people uh, who think that they can get to heaven uh, on their own way. Listen to what the Bible says about the ways of mankind. If you're one of those people who has thought or is thinking, uh, I can get to heaven my own way. It says in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom. Everybody wants wisdom. Some people claim to have it. Some people hope to have it. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And this is what it says about your way and my way. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way. One more time. There is a way. Words matter. Words are very important. So listen carefully. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way. Not the way, but a way. That seemeth right unto a man. There's a way that seems right to you and me. But the end thereof are the ways of death. You think you have your own way to heaven? I have my way, you have your way. Uh, I know what the Bible says, but I have my way. And you can have your way. And you shouldn't be so narrow-minded thinking that there's only one way. I have my own way. It says in Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right to mankind. But the end of that way is death. Is death. The reason that our way seems right, again, words matter. Why does my way seem right? Because our society says, follow your heart. Follow your heart. It'll lead you to the right place. The Bible says, no, don't follow your heart. That's terrible advice. It says in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, the heart is deceitful. Jeremiah 17 verse 9, that's in the Old Testament. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know who can know what's really in their heart? The heart is, is deceitful. Your heart will deceive you. Your heart and my heart is desperately wicked until we invite Jesus Christ into our heart and the Holy Spirit comes in and takes over our life and leads us in the way everlasting, the truth everlasting, and the life everlasting. There is a way that seems right but the end of that way is just death. Don't follow your heart. That's terrible advice from our culture and our world. Don't follow that advice. 
The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed are you that if you do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Be careful where you get your counsel and your advice so that you can be blessed and you can walk in blessings. Jeremiah 17, 9, one more time. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you may think you have a way to get to heaven, but the end of that way is death. If Jesus Christ is not your way and your truth and your life. In Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, David is saying, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The way, not a way. Lead me in the way everlasting. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer. There is no other way, no other truth, no other life. I don't know how much more plain to make it. And if you want to hear truth, you're hearing it today. If you don't want to hear truth, then everything I said has gone in one ear and out the other. And the Bible talks about why you cannot hear truth today because your lifestyle and your choices have been unrighteous and unholy and ungodly. And you're suppressing the truth in your life. You cannot even receive it. So I pray in Jesus' name that those blinders will be lifted and you'll be able to receive truth today. Truth in love. Truth being spoken to you today in love from the word of God. Amen. The source of our information. So we follow him today. How do we follow him today? Not by making up our own way, but in the same way that the first generation Christians, the disciples who became apostles 2,000 years ago, this is the way that we follow. Not making up our own way, but following the way that Jesus presented. They heard the words of Jesus and they believed them. But they didn't just believe them, they obeyed them. It's got to go more than just hearing and believing. You've got to obey. The uh, disciples, they confessed their sins to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They believed that he died and took the punishment of their sins and he rose from the grave to new life. They followed his example. They obeyed his commands to tell others the truth about sin and righteousness and judgment. This is the apostles' doctrine that we already discussed earlier in today's message, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. This is what they believed. Let us continue faithfully to walk in the same doctrine and in the fellowship and in breaking of bread, sharing meals together and having conversations that are all about Jesus. And let us also continue in prayer. Let me pray for you and with you. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you today with hearts of thanksgiving and praise. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you. There never has been anyone like you. There never will be anyone like you. You are Jehovah. You are self-existent. You're not made by hands. You're not carved out of stone or wood. You are the self-existent God. We give you all glory and all praise. Father, we place our whole life and our future, our hopes and our dreams in your hands, Father, because you have thoughts, of, uh, thoughts for us that are of peace and not of evil. Amen, Father. So I pray for anyone who's listening today. If the truth that has been spoken today is something they already know and believe, I pray they're blessed and encouraged with the reminder of these words. If this is the first time that they have heard this or the first time they've received it, even though they've heard it before, Father, I pray that anyone listening who has not called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they'll do that right now. That they'll do that right now and believe that Jesus is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth and He is the life and there is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other life except for the life found in Jesus Christ. I pray right now for those people that are considering salvation, that they will pray and they'll confess that they're a sinner, that they need a savior, that they'll invite Jesus Christ into their heart to change their life and make them the kind of person that you want them to be, just as you've done for so many of us, Father. Father, we're not perfect, but we are forgiven. And we praise you, Father, for being the source 
of our way, our truth, and our life. All glory belongs to you and all honor belongs to you. We worship you and you alone. Father, continue to have your way in our heart, in our life, in our mind, and in our choices, in our families, and in our homes, and in the work of our hands that you have blessed us with. Father, continue to bless cross life, family, worship. Have your way in our church and in this ministry. It's your church. It's your ministry. Have your way, Father. All glory belongs to you. We praise you in the beautiful and precious, saving and healing name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. We appreciate you. We hope to see you very soon. Next Sunday will be 5 o'clock, meeting in Plano, Cross Life Family Worship. God bless you.